In this video we'll show you how simple it is to install one of Rhoda's 100 litre top loader kilns into your studio. Many thanks to Tina from Just Ceramics. This is a kiln that she had installed back in the summer of 2022. So when you order your kiln from us you can come and collect from our warehouse. We try and keep them in stock and you can drive up and put it in the back of your vehicle, your van, your truck, your trailer and drive it back to your property or we can have it delivered to your premises and it will be taken to the most accessible part of your property on the pallet that it comes packed inside. Underneath the cardboard you'll find the kiln is complete and ready to plug in and start using. It's strapped to the pallet to make it resilient enough to withstand a bumpy transit to your property and can be wheeled or carried straight in and put to use straight away. In this instance you'll see that it's a little bit too wide to get through the door so what we're going to do is take it apart in sections and simply carry it through and reassemble it. So before we release the hinge for the lid we need to just take off the lid supports from either side. These are the two supports, these struts that prevent the lid from falling down when you are lifting the lid and also allows the lid to close gently without uh, disturbing the wares inside the kiln after you've loaded it. Obviously make sure you hold the weight of the lid while you're doing that otherwise it will just smash down. So once that's done we'll just release the hinge and that will allow the lid to be lifted off the top of the chamber. Then outside the kiln at the bottom you'll see the chamber is clipped to the base. On both sides of the kiln just unclip these clips and that will release the main chamber. There's a pair of sturdy handles on the kiln chamber and two adults should be able to carefully lift the chamber off the base and just pop it to one side for now. And then we carried in the base which is still screwed to the metal stand of the kiln. Uh, we could have just put this straight down and reassembled the kiln on top just doing what we've done to dismantle it but in reverse. Now the benefit of this particular kiln is that you have a stand as on many rotor top loaders that can be reversed and currently we have the kiln in a position where the legs are quite short but if you unscrew the base from the stand and flip over the stand you can make the kiln stand a little bit taller. There's a couple of screws at the back and there's a bolt at the front that just need to be undone. Then out comes the base carefully and put that to one side and we can flip over the stand. Now you'll notice that the stand has strong um, plastic feet on the underneath and all we need to do is simply take the plugs out of the top part of the stand and replace those with the feet that are currently on the bottom of the stand and then flip it over. The base goes back in and we need to make sure that the front of the kiln has that little hole that you might be able to see in the base at the front. That's a little venting hole that allows air into the chamber during the firing. Make sure you keep that at the front. And the two screws go into the back of the, the base and the, um, the bolt uh, to the front. Then carefully carry in the main chamber. As we do this, it's worth mentioning that this particular kiln um, as others in the series of rotor kilns like this top loader, you can increase the capacity of this kiln by another 50% by putting a ring just like this chamber piece 
underneath the, I, the, the piece that we've just put on the base there. So it would increase the capacity by another 50%, taking what is currently a 100 litre kiln up to a 150 litre kiln. Now it does mean you need to increase the power being supplied to the kiln, but if you are interested in doing that in the future, by all means talk to us and we can get you one of these special rings for your kiln. Now we've carried in the chamber, we've clipped it to the base, uh, the lid's come in and we just need to reattach the supports for the lid and screw the hinge back into position and then we can consider getting some power to the kiln. You'll notice in this situation the the kiln is on a non-combustible floor, there is a non-combustible surface behind and there is a decent amount of area all around the kiln. Those buckets will be moved and there is going to be circulating air uh, all around the kiln during the firing. No public access uh, for the duration of the firing. That's all something you need to risk assess before you uh, consider installing a kiln. Before we do that, this is probably the most satisfying part of the whole installation. There's a big piece on the main chamber and don't forget there is a smaller piece on the base as well that needs to be removed. So this is the venting tube. You can just jam this into the hole in the side of the chamber. This is where the gases will come out of the kiln and the tube just stops it, just fouling on your shiny metal. Then if you want, you can clip a mechanical venting system to this part here, which will then draw those gases through that bracket to an outside space. So, big caution here, this is the electrical part. If you're not qualified to do anything with electrics, please walk away, get a qualified electrician in, to do this part of the installation for you. We were quite lucky with this kiln in that it was replacing an older one that was running on exactly the same amperage. So it already had a designated RCD in the fuse box. So we just made sure that that RCD was switched off. The Rode 100 litre kiln comes with this 63 amp commando socket already installed on the end of the cable. Okay, now, you can take it off. now if you were getting it installed for you by an electrician you could ask them to put a switch box, a uh, commando switch box on the wall that would simply receive that socket and then it would be a simple case of just plugging the socket into the switch and you're done. Because we already had a switch on the wall with this installation we have removed the commando socket and we will connect the three wires from the kiln into the old switch. This is incidentally a 30 amp single phase electrical supply. Inside the kiln you'll find the computer, take it out and you'll find the socket for the computer on the side of the kiln. You can only connect it one way, line it up until the lugs go in, and then twist it to tighten it. Oh, it's good. Well, my coffee pot and everything. Now, this is the fun bit. Go to the App Store on your smartphone and find this app, the Rhoda app, and download it to your phone and install it. Enter your information and get ready to connect the kiln to your phone. So the easiest way to connect your computer to your app is to switch it on and at the same time hold down the up arrow until the word pair appears. And when you see the word pair, press the WPS button on your router and the computer should connect to your Wi-Fi. So the computer has the potential in its brain to hold on to 32 potential firing programs if you wanted to keep them in the computer. If you press the right arrow there it takes you into the program, go up and down, you can cycle through 
all the different programs that are currently in the computer. Now when you get the kiln new there will be four programs already preset into the uh, the programmer. Program one is the preset firing to oxidize the elements. You want to do that as the first firing to protect the the kiln's elements for the future. So the program one is 100 degrees per hour up to 1050 and then it doesn't hold there at all and then it's full power to 1000 degrees which is basically meaning it just stays there um, at 1050 and we hold for one hour and 30 minutes and then that's the end. So it might seem a bit of a pointless firing but it does a few things for you actually. It shows you that the kiln is working, the power is acceptable, that the elements are all working, the relays are good, your app is operational. So I would recommend it's a good idea to get that first firing done before you go putting anything inside the kiln. So for a standard earthenware glaze firing, a Orton Cone 06, we've set it in this computer at 150 degrees per hour up to 550, no hold. Then we should have put 85 degrees per hour, but we've actually put 100, but it's fine. 100 degrees per hour up to 600, no hold. And then another 100 degrees per hour up to 940, no hold. And then just to slow it down a bit at the top of the firing, 60 degrees per hour up to 1000, and then we'll hold or soak there for 10 minutes. That's a good standard glaze earthenware firing, a cone 06. So when you press start on the computer, with your smartphone uh, app enabled and connected, you'll be able to see the kiln firing on your phone. And you can watch in real time the temperature of the kiln going up on your phone. You can monitor where the kiln is during the firing and you can find out after the firing how long it's taken to fire. You could tell the kiln to stop firing from your phone. You can also review really interesting, useful bits of information like how much has that last firing cost. Um, it will log all these firings in the app for you and it will allow you to see if there's any faults with the kiln on your phone without you having to go to the kiln you'll get a, a notification on the app that tells you that something uh, was amiss. I really think this is a game changer for the ceramic industry because it will allow you to know exactly what the situation is with your kiln at all times during the firing without you having to shoot back into your studio to check did you put the firing on and is the kiln cool enough to start unloading you don't need to go back to the kiln to double check you can just get your phone out and see uh, and also did your staff put the kiln on to fire to the right temperature again you can check on your phone without having to go back to the kiln itself and finally this is just a little demonstration to show you all the furniture that you get included with this particular model of kiln You'll get the four circular discs, the kiln shelves, and all these assorted props. So you can put inside the kiln, I'm just showing you on the lid of the kiln. Obviously they go inside the kiln, not on the lid of the kiln. But this is just so you could see what is included. You can load directly onto the base of the kiln if you want to, or you can just put a little half prop on the base of the kiln and stand one of these discs on the on the bottom of the kiln and then divide the space up depending on what you've got to fire inside the chamber just make sure that each area each shelf area has a decent amount of space try not to have them too short otherwise the radiant heat from the side of the chamber is unable to get into the middle and the center of that shelf. So just be sensible about how you space things apart inside the, the kiln. You get all these included with the, with the 100 litre kiln when you buy it. 
and obviously we will have more props, shelves, accessories, firing equipment, advice and guidance available from Hobby Ceramic Craft should you ever need it. We try and keep these popular hobby size 100 litre kilns in stock um, at all times. They are very popular at the moment so if you do not see it available by all means just go on our website and request um, to be informed when they come back in stock and we will let you know. If you have any questions about this or any other kiln we may stock, by all means contact us. We've got links below for our email address or give us a call and we'll do what we can to help. Thanks for watching. Oh and thank you Tina, I hope you enjoy your kiln.